Welcome back to the Webby and O'Neill channel. It's match preview, Manchester United versus Brentford. We've also got updates from Eric Tenag's press conference and also we're going to have a bit of a chat on the latest news surrounding Dan Ashworth later on in the video. So stay tuned for that one. And as ever, Reds, get involved in the chat because we will try and discuss some of your comments throughout today's video. First of all, how are you feeling today? Are you looking forward to the game tomorrow? I can't wait. Uh, these international games, they just like, they bore me to death. I miss Man United. And yeah. when you look at the Liverpool game, the thing you wanted was another game straight away and the international breaks got out of it. Ten Hag today looked at him there. He can't wait as well. So that's a good thing. Yeah, there were some uh, injury updates actually on uh, Lisandro Martinez, Luke Shaw as well, who we'll start with first. He says, yes, I expect him back before the end of the season. He is still on schedule and will return to our team. So a bit of good news there. We might need him going into the remaining games of the season yeah a bit of good news but there's no set date for him so at the yeah. end of the day him coming back let's hope that there's something to play for yeah. we need to carry on winning mm -hmm. and for him to come back add it to the squad make it stronger but no set date uh, and that is a worry to be honest with you uh, when there's no set date he didn't even mention if there was a week two weeks or three weeks so to me that's a worry no set date but listen Quicker he gets back, back into the squad and strengthens it, that's good. Like you say, we might need him as well at the end of the season yeah. because we don't know if we're still going to be fighting for that Champions League place, either fifth, maybe fourth, which doesn't look unlikely at the moment. But, you know, he's a good player, Luke Shaw, and he brings definitely something to the team. And he's mentioned Lisandro Martinez as well, and he expects him to be back in the squad against Brentford, which is a huge boost. Yeah, a huge boost. We, we spoke at the beginning uh beginning of the week there and I said like uh, Ten Hag was hopeful I was hopeful that he was back he came back uh, early from Argentina yeah, had a little spell out there I think it was a bit of a bonding spell mm. there was no worries from United letting him go he's come back stepped up his training out there on the pitch with the lads and that so he'll be in the squad will he get a game that's the thing uh, I think it's to rush him in I don't think there's a need I think he uh, will make the bench uh, and quite rightly come on at some point get uh, his match fitness up yeah, let's hope he is, you know, at that level where he can actually start the game because we're always a better ta team, sorry, with Martinez yeah. in it than out of it. And Harry Maguire, I think, still injured. Uh, you've got Rafael Varane there. You know, that's our best partnership, Martinez and Varane, surely. So yeah. with us missing also at left-back, you know, we do need some composure in that back four and Martinez definitely brings you that. Yeah, like I say, I'm, I'm hopeful that he's in the squad and Ten Hag's hopeful he's in the squad. If he's in the squad, I think Martin, Martinez will be chomping at the bits to get in there, he's a warrior. We all know he's a warrior, he's a fighter and everything. And I, I don't think he'd be too happy sitting on the bench. So it'd be great to see him in there. And you have to look uh, at the Liverpool game on the back of that, you know, going into it, the euphoria and everything there. Martinez wants it. So in a way, I hope he's in the side, you know what I mean? But I still have that little bit of niggly thing don't rush it if there's no need, because at the end of the day, you've got to look at the players at the back uh, for the Liverpool game and they all perform well. Yeah, Zach says in the chat, he says, hopefully tomorrow ain't no banana skin against Brentford. There's always that possibility with United this season, isn't it? Because you don't know what team's going to turn up. You know, we have a performance like that, a win against Liverpool. You know, before that, yeah, we won 2 0 against Everton. It wasn't the great performance. But, you know, Fulham, you know, Manchester City as well before that. Listen, I've got to say this. Uh, so, just bear with me on it and just get you your just take your time and, and get, you get your it opinions out. on it because <laughs> you know we can't be blinded to the reality of what this team is uh, as a Manchester United fan. I fully understand the problems what have gone on, but you have to realise right the Jekyll and Hyde performances. What a fantastic performance and result against Liverpool. <laughs> But yeah. we've seen good performances, good results, and then it all goes pear-shaped the next game. It's Jekyll and Hyde performances right throughout the season. You know, that's not me criticising Man United. We have had absolutely untold problems on and off the pitch. But the thing is, I'm not blinded to reality. I just hope you aren't. Can we expect to win? Do we want to win? Of course we do. Yeah. But you just never know what's going to go on with this side. I was gutted when that international break come, absolutely gutted, because I just thought, we need another game. And I think the players wanted another game, the manager definitely wanted another game. But th that's my problem. We've had that break. At the end of the day, he's got them back in training and he's trying to G them up and get them back in that mood. And it's going to be very difficult on the back of the euphoria of the Liverpool game to get hit them same heights. So at some point during that game, you'll be going... 
this is a Jekyll and Hyde performance. Yeah. But let's hope it's not too long, like half an hour, 45 minutes in the game. We need to be able to put a bit of consistency going forward now. It is imperative that we do that. Going to be very hard, so don't start thinking, here we go, after the Liverpool game, yeah. we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Yeah, we're We've football. been caught out with that many a time, oh, yeah. we, on the yeah. back of... Uh, you know, All football supporters have. Yeah, we get carried away, and rightly yeah. so, though, because yeah. you know that's what it means, supporting your club. But yeah. in the chat, Martin Kinsella sort of says the same as what you're saying. Hopefully keep everyone fit, as in as in the squad is weak. Yeah. I'd like to see a strong finish to the season, and that's what we're hoping for here, like you say, with consistency. Yeah, well, that's what we want. We yeah. want a bit of consistency and these final remaining games will tell you exactly where the club's at. They're going to go for that Champions League spot. But to come away from Brentford with nothing, then, you know, you have to look at reality and say, that's it. Yes, Villa uh, and Spurs are playing tomorrow yeah. uh, before our game and that. So with a bit of luck, you look at them and you say, slip up, slip up. We have to put in a performance against Brentford get a win and make sure we're ready to pounce on either Villa or Spurs slipping up going forward. So we have to be relentless now and go for it. And I think Ten Hag will open the game up uh, where he goes, we've got to win this. Forget forget that, forget that. Go for the win like he did against I Liverpool think the fingers with later on. As well, they've got some tricky fixtures coming up, I think, in April. I think they play Newcastle, Man City, Arsenal and Liverpool. So, like you say, Man United have got to put a run together here, some consistency, you know, and let's aim for that fifth place, maybe fourth. It's not what we want. No. We don't want to be sitting here talking about, no. oh, we need to finish in the top four, you know, like Arsenal fans always did and have, have done for years. But that's just where we are at the moment and the results, you know, it's a fair reflection of our season up to now. It, it's where we are at the moment, but what you want, you want competitiveness, you want yeah. something to go for, you want a challenge. And this is a challenge now. And at the end of the day, you sort of say, we want to put in competitive games of football and challenge and try and get fourth or fifth place. Listen, we have got some competitive games. We've got Liverpool and Arsenal at home. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we could decide who actually wins <laughs> The Premier League. Yeah. You know, just going back onto that comment from Martin as well, where he said, hopefully we keep everyone fit. And I think this is the first season where we go into games thinking, I just want to come out of this game with obviously the three points, but everyone match fit. Because it seems like a week on week basis where we lose a player, or, or let's say we bring two back, then we lose one or lose two. And it's constant throughout the season. Yeah. It, it, it's and the big players for us as well that yeah, we've been losing. It's been very disappointed right throughout the season where you've watched games. Yeah, some of the games we've lost and that. Yeah. And, then, and then 24 hours later, you get the, the devastating news that a player what you need is suddenly injured and he's not out for a week or, you know, he's touch and go. He's out for months. And that's been the big problem with lots of players this season. Yeah. That They're not out for a short break. They're out for a long period of time. And it's disrupted yeah. United. But... A lot of muscle injuries as well. Well, you know, I, I'm not a doctor or anything, but something's gone <laughs> wrong there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you weren't too bad with the old Dettel and uh, wipe when I was younger, falling over. Dr. O'Neill. No, no, Dr. O'Neill had his sponge, but th <laughs> things are different sponge. now. You know, it's, yeah. yeah, the magic sponge. Yeah. But th <laughs> it's muscle injury after muscle injury. So there's something definitely wrong. And hopefully that the, the people in charge of the football now uh, who have took over it uh, look into this. And I think they definitely will be because a lot of injuries mm. have been occurring and th they all seem to be happening to all the players when they've got an injury. So there's something wrong there. But Luke Shaw, hope, hope he's back by the end of the season. But Martinez, I'm, I'm, I'm made up with that. And yeah. it, it just looks like, you know, a left back there, no Luke Shaw. For me, looking at it, wan is a shoe in for I'll it. tell you what, Matt, I actually put Anthony left back because I think it was his best performance of the season. That little cameo role at left back against Liverpool. Listen, he... he I th honestly, I think that was his best performance. I, I, th I think when you look at that game and you look what Anthony did and all the subs did, what, what they come on and that, they did a job. They were told to do this, some of them. Yeah. They've not done it before and that, but it just shown you the fight that the players had and I just hope that they continue that going forward. Let us know what you think. Do you think he'll start with wan again at left back? I thought he'd done a good job, to be honest with you. I, I think he will start with wan uh, left back. Yeah. I think the lower on the right works well down there, uh, gets up there. Uh, and Wan-Bissaka, you've seen what he did. Didn't matter that he was on the left. 
he was going forward. Yeah. He was like overlapping he and was, everything. He was trying to give that partnership with Rashford, wasn't he? Yeah, but he was giving the partnership with the midfield players. Yeah. He, he was like coming inside or he was going down the wing and that. Absolutely tremendous. So that's something I'm looking forward to when the game starts, actually, to see if he is left back. Yeah, a decent comment from Amy Black. She says... They need to bring their A game. It's mixed as they can play well against the top teams, but play poor against the lower teams. Hopefully they put in a good performance through the whole game and not just one half. Listen, we've played poor against some poor sides as 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 we see it. Uh, Manchester United up there and then you see a team down there near the relegation or something. And we have put in some poor performances. But at the end of the day, I can turn around and say, we went to Anfield, got a point. We beat Liverpool recently here. We beat Aston Villa. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Uh, Twice all man away. Yeah, we yeah. came back against Wolves at the death again. There has been some good performances against some good sides. I'm not saying Wolves are a great side. I think they're a better side than what they were at the beginning of the season. But these games there, we have let ourselves down badly. But I think the way this is going to go, when you look at it, there's a run in here, there's a fight. There's a fight on to get something. Uh, and to get something is that Champions League. You've got to remember that Champions League. It is important for the club. And I think the, financially the, as well. FFP well, that's, and all that, that that's what I'm on. Rev- that's what I'm on about the revenue. Yeah, is 15 percent more income going into that Champions League. So, for mm. a, from a club point of view, I think people in the background will be like pushing and sort of reminding people, "Hey, we need this, and let's hope it's taken onto the pitch." Uh, so, to me, I'm looking forward to these last few games. Yeah, Marcus uh, joining us from Toronto. Good morning to you, my mate. Thank you very much, he my says, mate. Villa are the team that might slip with the amount of fixtures, but I hope it's smug Spurs just because, well, they're smug. I think, I, th- I think, how you look at it, I, 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 I get what you're saying, but at the end of the day, United have to be in a position mm. ready to pounce. You look at Spurs, uh, won a game at Aston Villa away, then go to Fulham and get beat at Fulham. You wouldn't have expected that, but that's what's happening. And with Villa as well, you know, up and down results and that pressure. Can these, the, the Villa and Spurs, mm. can, can they actually handle the pressure? And, and in a title running or a running like this going for the top four or the top five, you know, sometimes it's always better to be the chaser because you just... Shackles are off and you go for it. And that's what I'm expecting Ten Hag and this team to produce where the shackles are off and, and, and there's no messing about. There's no like passing it about, trying to kill time, this, that and the other. Go for it, go for it. And that's yeah. what happens when you're actually chasing and you've got nothing to lose. Because Man United have actually got nothing to lose in this race for a Champions League spot. Just talking about injuries, medicals. Do you think we we'll might see Mason Mount this weekend? Maybe get a start, freshen things up. I'm not sure about a start. Uh, it, it, listen, he might get a start. We, mm-hmm. we, we just don't know. Uh, Ten Hag bought him, and at the end of the day, he's fit. So would it be a surprise for Mason Mount to be in there? No, it wouldn't. But I don't, me personally, I don't expect him uh, to be on the pitch. And I think it'd be wrong uh, to bring him in, in. Do you think in, with the amount of time he's been out, they'd probably need to manage him a, a bit better in terms of not starting as many games going into the end of the season, just come, coming off the bench for, let's say, half an hour, 20 minutes and see how he goes and build him up that way. I think when you, when you look at him, you, there is a big worry with his fitness, without mm. a doubt. I, I, I've been shocked when I've looked at his injury list uh, when, when it's come out. I've been absolutely shocked. Yeah. Uh, I am very surprised that they went for somebody with such a, a distinguished injury list. Yeah. It, it, it shocked me, uh, but he's back. Mm. He came on against Liverpool. He's at, we've had the break uh, for the internationals, so that might have given him a little bit of a rest. But to start, I'd, I'd, I actually don't see that uh, because it's a tactical change and everything, and I can't see Ten Hag changing it tactically and dropping someone who performed really, really well in that Liverpool game. I think he'll be on the bench, and quite right, in my opinion, that he'd be on the bench. Yeah, yeah. Um... Tenag also was asked about Kobe Mainu and he's really proud of his performances uh, for England and Manchester United. And he was also alluding to the attention that he's starting to get now away from the pitch. You know, like sponsors are knocking at his door now, like Nando's, etc. Yeah, yeah. And he said he's already discussed this before, but so far he handles it very well. And if he crosses the line, of course, I as a manager, we as coaches, we will interfere. Yeah, I, I have to look at Kobe Mainu, and we go back uh, before the pre-season and we spoke about Kobe Mainu, and then we've seen him 
uh, in action and then he got injured. We was aware of him. Lots of people out there was aware of him. Uh, so every, the attention has always been there. The expectations from Ten Hag and everybody in the academy and, and in the club, yeah. they all knew what was coming. So I think when you look at Kobe Mainu's temperament and, and what the club have to do to protect him, uh, I think it's already been set in place. And that's why you see when you see Kobe Mainu, he has a maturity about him and he's, nothing seems to phase him. So this talk about uh, looking after Kobe Mainu, keeping his feet on the ground, I think this has been in action for a long, long time. Way, way longer than a lot of people think. Way back into the academy because he was a star in the academy uh, and he was always going to be one. So I think everyone has kept him on 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 a strong footing and he has actually looked so mature and way above uh, his age. Yeah, I remember at the FA Cup youth uh, final when we went in, yeah. him and Garnacho stood out head and shoulders um, amongst yeah. the rest of that night. Yeah, well, you look at Garnacho then, you know, he, he's had his feet kept on the ground. Mainu is the same. Uh, they're coming from the same stock. This has been worked on with Kobe Mainu, right? This is what you're going to face. This is what you need to do. And he's done well with it and so's Garnacho. It's a great night, actually, that one at the FA Cup U final. The atmosphere in there, it was great. Yeah, so was the Champions League when we won the treble. But, hey, you know, we can go on and on and on about <laughs> yeah. it, you know. But yeah. it's, it's back to reality here. Yeah. This is what we've got. and We've got a game coming up and we don't want one of them Jekyll and Hyde performances. That's how I see it. Yeah, Martin says on Kobe Mainu, hopefully he won't surround himself with hangers-on. He's a top player, Mainu, doesn't need distractions and any, any sort of that rubbish. I mean, it'd be very difficult when you talk about hangers-on, you know, the appear, listen, your best mate can be there and just turn against you but for his own interest. Yeah. It's happened to so many professionals throughout their lives. The story's out there, uh, these, these bodies on the ground and, you know, some, <laughs> some buried away here and there, you know yeah. what I mean? That's life, that's what the money does, that's what the stardom does and all that. But you can only hope that United have got everything in place. To me, it looks as though they've had it in place for a long time. And Kobe Mainu, what a star, what a future star. He's playing well, he's doing all right at the moment. And I just hope that he progresses. There's more to come from Kobe Mainu. Uh, I wouldn't say he's perfect at the moment. And I, and I haven't said he's perfect at the moment. I still think there's one or two things he can add to his game. But he's got a long way to go. And I, I personally, uh, you know, he's got into it. And I don't really want to rush him when there's no yeah. need he's there he's not going away yeah the quality that he's got and you can see the ceiling is so high to oh, even yeah. improve even further yeah. so what a player is going to be and let's hope that he's got a long career here at Manchester United as well yeah but yeah I'm just going to go on to some reports as well about Dan Ashworth that was coming out yesterday he's been topped up again this morning by other reports and it says Newcastle are content with letting head of recruitment Steve Nixon mastermind their summer transfer plans after placing Ashworth on gardening leave while Manchester United are adamant they will not meet the demands of 20 million in compensation, with incoming chief exec Omar Barada expected to take charge of the negotiations in the interim. Yeah, it, so we've... there's a standoff here. Newcastle, Man United, yeah. who wins? There is a standoff, but we've talked about it before. And, you know, like Newcastle there, to me, it's always about the money. You know, the stories coming from Newcastle, uh, some quite a lot of reports talking about they don't want him at Manchester United until Christmas and all that because of the transfer uh, dealings, what he, what he knows about Newcastle are aiming for and other things within the club. I, 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 never, I never bought that at all. I always thought it was about the money. But the main thing I thought it was about was Newcastle. Man United went to Newcastle and took their man, their star man. That's how they seen it. So they they are a small club. That's how it looks. They don't want to be seen as a small club. So they're just prancing about, sticking the chest out and going, hey, we're Newcastle United. We're bigger than you or we're bigger than you think. We're not a small club. But the, the fact is, Man United have gone to them and straight away, Dan Ashworth, right, has just tendered his resignation. Well, they, they're, they're just standing tall now and it's all about money. It's not about what goes on within the club and the information he's got on his computer and all that. That, to me, uh, is just trying to blindside where Newcastle are just standing tall and saying, hey, we're Newcastle United, we're demanding this and you better pay it or you're not getting him. That's what it's all about. And they will get him and it's about the money yeah. uh, and nothing else. But United will sort it out. And Omar Barada, if that's that's the way it's going to go, he will do the dealings and get him. He'll get him within a week of the final whistle.
It, it will do. Yeah. <laughs> I like that one. Final <laughs> whistle, bump, in you go. And that's yeah. it. Yeah, I like that. Um, the Telegraph, though, they've done like... A, I don't know if you've read it today as well in the Telegraph. They've done a, a bit of a hit piece, I think, on Dan Ashworth. Because, obviously, there's a lot of news today surrounding Sandro Tonali and his ban might actually get increased due to other charges. And in, in the article, it says it was the job that he required... No, it was his job, sorry, to do the required due diligence on every new signing. And this was a major issue he failed to uncover. And you can't disagree with that because that was his job. But I, I, I wouldn't say it's a hit piece. Would you not? I wouldn't say it's a hit piece. I mean, what it is, it's due diligence here. And he is under big scrutiny. Yeah. I mean, you, you've got to look at Tenali. Went to Newcastle. I think it was 55 million mm. uh, they paid for him. It's the most an Italian side sold a player for. It's the most expensive Italian player, I think. Well, it, well, it's coming under scrutiny, yeah. and quite rightly so. Dan Ashworth had a major part in bringing him, uh, and he didn't uncover anything untoward. And not only is it untoward where he was in Italy and the gambling uh, things, what he was doing, right? it's carried on where the FA are now in it. So the scrutiny, Man United want Dan Ashworth, you know, so Jim Ratcliffe is saying, and that Dave, Sir David Brailsford are saying, we want best in class. But at the end of the day, there is some scrutiny, and quite rightly so, yeah. into the dealings of how this uh, transfer proceeded. Things are missed, and you can't afford to miss things like this. You look at Newcastle, I think is the second, uh, 55 million. It's, it's one of the, the highest transfers to Newcastle's recent history. I think it's the second uh, one behind Isak. Well, you've got to look at that and say... Well, hang on a minute, this has all gone pear-shaped. Why has it gone pear-shaped? And quite right, uh, yeah. th there is questions being asked of, has this happened before, kept under well, the radar? But this is, listen, in Newcastle's history, they thought this player was going to take him on uh, into the future and they were going to bring other players in to work around him and work off him. That's not happened. Well, that's put Newcastle back. If you look where they are in the league now, mm -hmm. what's happening and everything, they don't seem to be getting going. They're not on a roll. It's all, it's all chaos. There's no leader. There's no footballers uh, actually performing. And this Tenali could have done the business for him. So the due diligence is up for scrutiny and quite rightly so. So I don't think it's a hit piece. I think it's quite right that people look at it and maybe this might just get Ash, uh, might just get Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos and all that lot just looking at it and going, ooh, let's have a little pause here. Let's see what develops here. And, 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 and is there any mis misgivings over the due diligence of how Dan Ashworth uh, has performed? The thing is, though, you wouldn't, would you really expect, you know, someone in the football club bringing a player in to really find out if a player's got an issue like that with gambling or has been gambling the way Tenali has, you know, would you really expect for him to uncover that? Well, you know, unless you're a detective or something like that, do you know what I mean? You're talking about millions and millions of pounds mm. and paying players millions and millions of pounds, right? If you look... I'm like, just what, thinking if you, of how it could get covered up, a player doing that. Listen, you... you Obviously, it's come out now. It's not far-fetched that you have agents and all that. Right, yeah. looking round to see. You have to understand what a person's personality is and all that. So you'd get someone in there to understand and talk to and everything. So at the end of the day, due diligence wasn't done. And, and, and to me, it's quite right that you look into every aspect of a player's background, okay, when you're paying massive money. The money is going up and up and up. So at the end of the day, first thing you do, do your due diligence, and that is looking at a player's personality and players or people close to him to find out what type of guy he is. They haven't done it clearly because the gambling, what he's doing, people around there, and there is a bit of a shout that the that the Italians covered it up and just sold him sold him a curveball. Yeah. Here, get him out of here quickly as can. We're not arguing. It looks to me as though quite a lot of people knew well. about it. Yeah, I was actually surprised AC Milan let him go as well. Because he was tearing it up over there at AC Milan. He had a big reputation. And when I seen that transfer go through, I, f I actually thought Tenali, he had, the, he had the potential, still got the potential to go to an even bigger club. Well, the thing That's is... That's just my own opinion because of when I've seen him play. Newcastle went to him, bang. And like just you say... Got the deal done. Soon got as. the deal done. In Milan, uh, AC it. Milan were just like, thank God for this. That's yeah. how it seems. Yeah, maybe. You know, if you're looking at it from the other point of view, right, away he goes, right, and they got the deal done right quickly. And he was tearing it up, like you say. Yeah. Very strange. 
People knew what was going on. People hushed it up and the due diligence by Dan Ashworth and the people around him just weren't good enough. And it clearly not good enough. Would you still rather wait until, let's say, 2025, the January or next summer for Dan Ashworth to come in and like, be bent over backwards like we have done with transfers in the past and pay a 20 million fee for him? No, I don't think the 20 million fee, it won't It won't drag on and on and on. Omar Barada comes in, That that's... That's yeah. what they're saying. He'll come in, sort it out, and there'll be a, there'll be a chat and all that. Look, you've had your, you've been shouting. Your you've, mouth had your off. Now. you've had your fun now. You've had your fun now. Think you're the big time, Charlie. Yeah, here's eight million, uh, and 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 that's yeah. it. You know what I mean? So that that's what will happen. I think as, as I go back to it, Newcastle are just posturing, right? Because they've had the nose put out of place by Manchester United. We're Manchester United, the biggest club in the world. Just walked in there like the old days and just took someone from a club. What thinks that? What thinks they're going to be big time? I'm not saying they won't. They think they're going to be big time. Yeah, anything more to add? Anything in your mind you want to discuss? Get out. Listen, it's a long weekend. Hope you enjoy it. And most of all, stay safe. I think this is going to be a game where we all just sit up and there's got to be proper action. We're going to get a few surprises in this game. So just enjoy it, relax, and stay safe. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Friday. We'll be back straight after the game. I think we'll do a live video yes. five or ten minutes after the full-time whistle. So if you're available, come and join us and get your opinions on, on the game. And hopefully we've got the three points as well. So you enjoy your Friday and we'll see you again.